And here we are, another Zoe Bowl update. After one NFL week in the books, we can take a look at some of the projections and predictions I made last week, and we can take a look at a preview for week two. Now, starting off with the predictions I made for week one, I had Cole, Sadie, Thomas, Jason, Matt, and Brandon all winning. I was, of course, only correct on four out of six of those. The first game that I called wrong was a game between myself and Cole. It was hard to pick Cole to lose after just making a podcast saying I thought he had the best team after the draft. Not to mention predicting Kareem the Dream would put up over 40 points his rookie debut versus the Patriots at Gillette Stadium would have been a little hard to predict. But I'm giving this upset to the Rams defense versus my Indianapolis Colts. Now, I'm a huge Colts fan, so watching this game gave me zero pleasure. But let's just say, even as a fan, I didn't have a whole lot of faith in the Chuck Pagano, Paul Zine offense. And even without Kareem Hunt playing, I still would have scored over 100 points. Not to mention I did have Bradford starting, and I actually ended up dropping him and just starting Phillip Rivers because I'd already had the game locked up. So I can definitely say that this defense really helped me week one. Or really, I should say, the lack of Colts offense. And yes, week two, I am playing again. The defense is going to and going back to get it for a set. 49ers and Coach McVay. The next game I predicted wrong was Brad versus Brandon. Although this matchup was just as much about Brad having a good week as it was Brandon having a bad week, Brad did have a few good surprises. First off, even though it was on his bench, he does have Gillisley, who looked to take over that promising role that Blunt had last year with the Patriots offense. I thought West looked good, and then of course Ezekiel Elliott is back for the year now for Brad, which is a huge game changer for his entire team. I had Brad ranked pretty low because of his lack of running back depth, but now he's looking like one of the more solid teams. But the guy I think was a really special piece for Brad this week was Thielen. Now, going into this season, I was a really big Diggs fan, but then a couple weeks before the actual draft, I started to take notice in Thielen. Now, don't get me wrong, Diggs still had a great game, but what ruined the potential for Diggs for me was how much involvement Thielen has in the offense. And I know if I had Thielen on my team, those nine receptions would have me salivating. Out of all the week one results, this is the one that definitely makes me want to overreact. This makes me feel like Brad is a big contender to go deep into the playoffs. However, I am going to temper those expectations. That caught up, but it is an encouraging start for Minnesota for sure. Now, Matt versus Mike wasn't a game I called wrong. I did have Matt winning this one, but when two teams are scoring under 100 points, it's kind of a toss-up for who's going to win. Despite starting Russell Wilson and Burkhead as his running back too, Matt managed to get a win week one. Although a good start by Woodhead, uh, it does appear that he had a hamstring injury and will not be back to full power until week eight. So although Matt does come away with a win week one, it is a little concerning that Hyde was his only usable running back last week. extremely disappointed that in a third and nine situation, a pass out of the back. So before I go into predictions for week two and take a look at the free agency, I just wanted to say uh, my condolences to Alan Robinson, Danny Woodhead, and David Johnson. All three pretty important pieces to the teams that they were lost to. Now, David Johnson looks to be replaced by a running back committee, and I saw that Chris Johnson, Ellington, and Williams were all three picked up. With Woodhead going down, it looks like Buck Allen's going to be getting some more work. I saw that Matt did outbid me by $1 on that one to pick up Woodhead's replacement. And replacing Allen Robinson, I saw that both Marquise Lee and Alan Hearns both got looks at by teams. We all know, though, going into this free agency that Tariq Cohen was the hotness. I was surprised to see him go to Cole for $61, a team that I already had as the best after the draft for my projections this year. He only had five carries in this game, but they were all pretty special, and he seems to be getting a lot of dump-off passes. He is definitely a compliment back. He'll be like a Woodhead or a Sproles or a Bush, but he definitely looks special and uh, could have a Trevin Coleman type year. And I think most teams felt the same way, considering he was bid on by eight different teams. Now, Week 2 has a lot of good games in store for us. I really like the Zoe Bowl rematch with Cole versus Mike. I like the uh, House Divided match between Sadie and Josh. And, of course, it's always good to see brothers battle me versus my brother Brandon. 
Now, uh, for the games this week, I have myself, Sadie, Thomas, Matt, Brad, and Cole all winning. I know I'm feeling pretty good having the Arizona defense versus the Colts. Hopefully Chuck doesn't figure out who he's playing again this week. 49ers and, and Coach McVay. 